So I'm having a, a few 5G issues um, where the van is. So I'm just coming on a little bit of a stroll to try and find a, a better signal. And I thought while I'm doing that, let's talk about Ireland. And look, full disclosure, hands up. I'm not going to do, as I have done with other matchups, a head-to-head -head Ireland versus Romania. Oh, I wonder which team I'll pick the players from. Because, come on, we know the result. We know in any head-to-head, -head, Ireland will have the better of Romania. Um, also, I don't really know much about this Romania team, if I'm perfectly honest. There's 20 teams. I want to learn. I'm willing. I'm here to learn. And uh, I'll know more about this Romania team by the end of the tournament than I do now. I'm probably in the same boat as you. Uh, but all the conversations are around Ireland and what this selection means. They've named the team for their opener and they've gone strong, haven't they? The, I, I, there's a few ways I'm thinking of this. Firstly, is this because they've only had two World Cup warm-up games? They need to get game time and cohesion and they're kind of ramping up because they've got Tonga next and then they're into the big two. Or is this because Andy Farrell wants to get scores on the board, like points? Because if all of the teams win three games and lose one, lose to each other, it will go on points difference. I'm not thinking for a second that Andy Farrell has that in his mind at all. I mean, he'd be crazy to. They're, they're thinking of winning every game. And what I think is going on here, tell me if you agree, let me know in the comments. This is preparation for South Africa in selection. That South Africa is what's in the back of Andy Farrell's mind. He wants a good result and a good performance in its own right, but he's thinking about combinations and selection for South Africa. And when you look at the pack, I think that might be what's going on. Because the big story is um, Josh van der Fleer, World Player of the Year, only recently. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's go, let's go this way. What's up, what's up here? Uh, take you on a little bit of a walk with me. So I'm just on the edge of this area called the Kalonk. I think I mentioned that on the last video. Um, so it's sort of, the city is just there, but it gets quite rural quite quickly, this side of Marseille. Anyway, um, Josh van der Fleer, World Player of the Year not so long ago, is not selected, he's on the bench. Peter Armani gets shifted to seven, Ty Byrne on the blindside flank and Joe McCarthy in its second row. Now, this may just be getting game time in people's legs. I wonder though if this is selection for South Africa in mind and Joe McCarthy, I think this might be an audition for him to get a starting job against the Springboks. And this is no reflection on Josh van der Fleer, any limitation in his game. It's just, well, rugby is a 23-man game now on a match day, 33-man game in this World Cup. And it's 23 men that win you a game. South Africa show that with the way they use their bench. And I think potentially Ireland may look to neutralise South Africa and add a little something with the people that they bring off the bench. And Josh van der Fleer could be that guy as good as he is, and he's good enough to start for, well, pretty much any international team. But Joe McCarthy's been playing well. He's got a chance, this is his audition. Um, Tideburn at blindside flanker, just a bit more heft, isn't there? So that's the pack kind of taken care of. Great to see Ronan Kelleher back on the bench. And it just demonstrates the, the class and depth that Ireland have got, that they can call upon Rob Herring, their third choice hooker, and he's absolutely awesome. So yeah, they can have confidence whoever is in their side, which cannot be said for most teams. And certainly I'm looking towards England and Wales for this one. And even Scotland don't have that kind of depth. It's, it's, it's quite rare that you can change players and not really notice a difference. Johnny Sexton is another big one. He's back and that's great to see. Um, I'm thinking possibly 50 minutes, get some time in his legs, get some points on the board, and then get him out of there. Maybe some of the other guys as well. Because, yeah, the big tests for Ireland are later on in this competition. Interestingly, a couple of stats for you. Oh, uh, Keith Earls uh, for Mac Hansen is another one. And another selection, which is this Ireland in mind? Bundiaki in for Robbie Henshaw. I wonder. I think there's, there's an argument to say that Bundiaki is there on merit might be first choice in any game if there was a World Cup final tomorrow because he is very, very good and Robbie Henshaw's had, had some injuries. But I, I wonder, I'm, I'm interested in that selection as well. Does, does, is that Ireland, the physicality that they bring through the centre, does he have that in mind? Guess we'll see, we'll see how he plays. Great options, great options. But uh, yeah, Keith Earls in for Matt Hansen. I don't think there's anything more into that than, you know, a bit of rotation. I don't expect Keith Earls to be starting the big games um, if Mac Hansen is fit and available. But an interesting one, Keith Earls is already Ireland's 
top World Cup point sc uh, try scorer, and he's 10 tries behind Johnny Sexton, um, Johnny Sexton, uh, Brian O'Driscoll for the all time Ireland top try scorer. I mean, to get 10 tries in a World Cup it would break the record. I think Josh Adams and who else? Someone tied with Josh Adams with eight tries, um, and that's the most that's ever been scored. Or did Josh Adams get seven on the last one and someone else has got eight? Anyway, the record is eight. Keith Ells isn't going to score 10 tries, but it will be a cricket score. Make no mistake, Ireland will win comfortably against Romania. Or if you're, if you're not from England or a cricket playing country, then uh, it'll be a basketball score. But I wonder, I just love it. Can, Keith Ells could score five tries and oh, he's not going to get the record. What am I talking about? One record that <laughs> I'm just getting ahead of myself here. But one record that is in sight is Johnny Sexton being Ireland's all-time top point scorer. Ronan Agara currently holds that. Johnny Sexton, I think 30 odd points behind. And he could get a chunk of those in this game, you would hope, from Ireland's perspective. Of course, Johnny Sexton won't be thinking about individual records like that. It would just be a nice thing to be able to to be able to look back on in years to come, I reckon. So um that's Ireland. I mean, I look at their lineup, whoever it is, and I feel confident in them. They they seem to have their mojo, but it's gonna get very real very quickly in this pool, isn't it? They'll be watching, they'll be the spectators watching South Africa v Scotland Sunday night, as will the rest of us. And then the big tests for Ireland lay ahead. And on that, please hit subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Hit like, leave your comments, and um, ooh, I'll see you on the next one.